Quick question, why would you ever buy a MIDI keyboard when you can make one yourself? Yeah, it won't be half as functional as the real keyboard and it will take hours to polish it, but who cares? Let's go and try making a quick beat using just this little guy and my laptop. The first reaction to this little piece is normally what the hell. So let's see what the actual hell is it. The official name for it is Carte d'extension microbit pour piano, which makes total sense. But when we convert Google Translate into English, we can see that it is a piano module designed for something called microbit. Microbit right here is a microcontroller board created to teach programming in a simple and fun way. We can slide the board right into a slot on the piano roll and try to make it work. Perfect for ages 8 and up, Microsoft Make Code is the ideal starting point for a seasoned coding veteran like one of us. If we follow the instructions, we end up with something like this. Very cool. But you know what would be cooler? Make it MIDI. MIDI is a digital interface that allows any little module like this one to send signals to a digital audio workstation and work like a big boy keyboard we have over here. You could do it in Microsoft Make Code, at least theoretically, but the process quickly becomes rather pornographic. Plus, you can notice that the only available piano module library does not recognize two keys pressed at once. An obvious product flaw that we will try to fix through reverse engineering. Why reverse engineering, you may ask? Well, because the documentation for this thing is absolutely useless crap. Gladly, we can hook it up to an Arduino and poke around different inputs and outputs for an hour or so to gather all the information we need. After flashing the brand new code on the microbit, we can start up Ableton and enjoy the magic. We can even press two keys at once now. Yeah, it takes some time getting used to it. And there are other problems, like random freezes. Also, check out this latency. Who would have thought that cheap electronics is absolutely unreliable? But what about actual utility of this piece? It's time to leave the nerd zone and try making something creative with it. Let me know in the comments if you want more detail, but for now, let's focus on Ableton. Let's take the background music and remove the melody as well as the chords. We have our chorus track right here, so we can use our little MIDI device and come up with some chords. Let's see how that goes. Yeah, the first one was better. Now that we have chords, let's arm a different track and record our melody. Maybe we can throw in a MIDI effect to make it a bit more exciting. Also, let's go an octave up. Okay, that will do. Let's add another instrument into our mix. Maybe a theremin for a perfect spooky vibe. Let's see if this clip works. Here's what 
happens if we go an octave up and play over this clip. Well, this essentially works like a pitch bend. And now we have our little track ready. It is now time to sum up the journey. This project was quite simple and fun to make. The whole setup is much cheaper than a conventional MIDI controller and it offers immense flexibility. You can essentially program it the way you want and it does anything you need it to. However, even with optimized code, it remains somewhat slow and imprecise. The piano module only has one octave and the only two buttons on microbit really limit the number of features that you can add to it. Overall, the final prototype is probably best suited for something like constrained writing and performances rather than Hans Zimmer's studio. And now you know what it takes to turn a random toy into a MIDI keyboard. As for the future, which one of these three projects do you want to see next? Let me know in the comments and subscribe for more content like this. But for today, Tommy Bianco out.